Hi, thanks for watching. My name's Howard and I'm going to review Alex's role play mock test that he did with me where I played the role of the pupil where we went out onto dual carriageways and dealt with numerous multi-lane roundabouts. So let's first of all let's just start with the result. So I've scored the marking sheet which I will put up on the screen so you can see that. And I've marked that as a pass. So congratulations, Alex. That is a pass. I scored it at 38. Um, and I just want to go through some of my observations and comment and sort of give you a bit of a debrief um, and see whether you agree. If, um, if you agree with things or don't agree, please feel free to put comments in the comments section because they're always good to discuss. And I will always like, subscribe for future content. So let's go through. So I've just made some notes I went through, which I'd like to share. Um, so let's start from the beginning. So at the beginning, I liked the way Alex dealt with the passenger safety and dealt with responsibilities. That was done nice and quick, really nice, lovely. Um, recap on MSPSL. Now during that little conversation, the pupil was asked about what they felt they need to be doing better. And judgment on roundabouts getting the gaps was what the pupil felt they needed. So at that point, I would have wanted to dig a little bit deeper into the MSPSL routine and talk about the look and larder. Now, later on in the lesson, that kind of come out, but I would have kind of wanted to get onto that straight away. Talk about larder talk to the pupil about how they felt and sort of listen to them. Let them put their case forward to how they're feeling and what would be the best way to tackle this problem. Because at the end of the day, it is their problem and, and they should have some ownership in solving that. So I was just thinking at the beginning, would have liked to have heard about that. Other good things to talk about with judging gaps would be prepared to stop, look to go. Now that later on that come out, sort of halfway point when we pulled up. But yeah, I would like to set that down so we had some firm foundations to how this lesson was going to develop and those goals were going to be met as a team. It's a teamwork. So that was my first sort of criticism, really. Level of instruction. I made a note about that. So how how was the instructor going to be helping the pupil with this problem on roundabouts, judging gaps. Was that agreed at the beginning? Didn't really feel like it was. There was a talk about level of instruction about how they're going to get to the NDR, the Northern Distributor Road. So that's just jargon. Um, but yeah, where we were going to be going to practice these roundabouts is like, yeah, there was a talk about, well, how are you going to get there? But yeah, I just would wanted to sort of know what level of instruction, what level of help, and get some agreement with the pupil there. Um, the door in the car park, the instructor's door was open, and the instructor did a check and shut that. Now, I'm thinking that's a missed opportunity. I'm thinking, okay, whether it's done deliberately or not, I'm not saying we should be trying to trick our pupils, but the door was open and whose responsibility is it to check doors are shut? What is the routine that we use to make sure that these things are done? So I thought as a missed opportunity to talk about DSSSM and some responsibility rather than the instructor doing it. So that's over instruction. Yeah, missed opportunity there. A little bit later on during the, um, the cockpit drill, um, before the pupil went to move off, now did you notice this, put it in gear and then realised my seat was in the wrong position. Whilst I was in gear, I moved my seat, moved my mirrors. Now this fault was not identified. So as an instructor, you really need to watch the pupil closely because that is potentially safety critical, isn't it? So it's missed. So th th this is now you know, this score is now starting to go down a little bit now because I'm thinking, oh, you know, that really should have been picked up on. And again, a missed opportunity to talk about SM and responsibilities. So I'd like to hear about that. Um, 
So yeah, really watch your pupil. Okay, so let's move him on. So um, yeah, the car, the wheels have got moving. They got moving quite soon, which they need to in a 45 minute um, mock test environment. Uh, there was a late gear change at the first roundabout, which was spotted immediately and that and, and jumped on by um, Alex, the instructor. I felt that was very proactive, very good. Coming up to the next roundabout, he was on to that and talking. And I felt there the the level of instruction was appropriate to that that need and what he'd witnessed and seen. So good. Um, I like the Q and A throughout the test. Um, early on, there was a speed limit change, and the pupil just went a little bit early to the national speed limit and exceeded speed limit, which was identified and discussed and analysed, talked about, good. Um, good questions about following distance and the what ifs and yeah, really dig, dig, digging deep. So throughout that, I liked Alex's Q&A um, and getting the people to think about things. Just one thing I will mention, there was a, later on there was a mention about, uh, well, you've passed your theory test, haven't you? Almost implying that, well, if you pass that, you should now know everything. Well, do we all know everything? Even at this stage, having passed the part one, do you know everything? So I wouldn't make that assumption. Always ask and don't assume pupils know just because they've passed the test. Because I'm, if I was asked, I might have just got my 43 out of 50. So there's a lot I don't know. And, you know, that just those 50 questions I got on that day, well, if I did another test, would I pass? So, yeah, let's try not to assume about knowledge just because I passed the theory test. Still recording. Good. Um, first roundabout, uh, well, first roundabout on the NDR, there was a good intervention um, where I was released the brakes but when I went for the gear change went in far too fast, it was a really sharp, sharp left hand lane turn into that roundabout. Good intervention, so really good part on Alex, keeping control of the lesson. It was timely, it was appropriate, spot on, good. Um, there was issues with me staying in lane um, and I was quite happily going to drift out of lanes and good intervention, timely, appropriate, well done, loved it, really good. A little bit later on, there was a talk about the overtake. So let's talk about the overtake. Was that agreed as a goal? Could it have been agreed as a goal at the start of the lesson? It wasn't. And when we got to that overtake, the instructor made the decision that we're going to overtake that. Well, I'd have liked to have asked the pupil rather than tell them, how do you feel about overtaking today? How much responsibility do you want? Do you, would you like me to help you? How do you feel about overtaking this lorry? Is it safe? Is it legal? Is it necessary? A little bit more structured than we're overtaking um, the lorry. Anyway, so then later on, I did go for the overtake on the lorry. Um, I was asked, is it safe? I checked my mirrors and I said, yes. And then I went to move out. And then there was an intervention to pull me back in. Now at this point, Alex wasn't 100% sure whether it was safe to do that. Now, my point of view there, he needed to be aware that it was safe and allow me. But I just felt over-instructed there because I had checked it was safe. I started to move. It was safe. There was no other car coming up. Now, I understand from the instructor's point of view, if, you, if your gut tells you or in that split second, if you're not sure, then you've got to go with your gut and make a split second judgment of what to do. And if you're not sure, you're always best to go more cautious. So if he didn't know, yeah, I kind of do understand why he intervened there. But I felt if he was more aware of the situation, if that was better planned, then that intervention wouldn't have been necessary. If you see where I'm coming from. I did feel over instructed because I did check. Okay. Okay, so 14 minutes in, we dealt with a roundabout where I was going to go ahead, second exit. Now on the sign, the ahead was slightly to the left, in the 11 o'clock position. Now on approach, the pupil put a left-hand signal on there, and that fault was not identified. Now potentially that could have been a safety critical. Had someone been in the first exit trying to get into that roundabout, and I've got my left signal on, they could have pulled out in front of me, 
So we kind of got away with that. The result of this test would have been different had a car been there and had that situation escalated more. So I felt a little bit of luck was um, part to play for the, the part of this. Could have been a different outcome if that fault's missed or no intervention. So um, just one to be aware of. I like the way that Alex encouraged the people um, to self-analyze problems throughout the drive. Um, I like the way he was proactive, talking about signs up ahead. So he's always keeping ahead and, and helping the people's awareness and planning skills. Maybe that could have been a bit of a goal. Today, we're gonna to look at your awareness and planning on a dual carriageway setting. So I want you, Howard, to, to look for signs and tell me what kind of hazards. If you see a peace sign, what does that mean? Oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and it kind of, yeah, maybe an opportunity to make that a goal. So it was good that he did it, but yeah, could that have been a bit more of a goal on the lesson? Okay, talk about the uh, intervention with the van where I kind of come into it. Good, again, timely, appropriate intervention. Uh, Alex pulled me up shortly after that to talk about it because the things were starting to escalate now. He needed to sort of get back in control. So I thought it was appropriate to pull me up to have a chat about doing that. There was a there was also a fault just before that where I'd done a U-turn at the roundabout and exited in the right-hand lane, not met. He was kind of, he was aware it was wrong at the time, but it wasn't mentioned. But later on, if you watch towards the end of the video, you'll see that Alex got back onto that and got that sorted. Um, yeah, so, speed on approach to roundabouts. Let's just talk about that for a moment. So, so the pupils basically timing gears incorrectly, releasing brake on the way into roundabouts, which is causing problems. I would have talked because it was analysed, but what wasn't analysed for me is the risk of a rear end shunt, which is quite a high, probably the most likely incident to have at a roundabout, um, where people's coming too fast, they bottle out, change their mind, stall, wrong gear, all of that kind of stuff. And yeah, rear end shunts are really high risk. So I'd, I'd like to hear about that and how we could reduce that risk. That would have made it better for me. Um, like I said, we had the half time, we talked about um, the problems. Would have liked to, I felt as a people, I was cut short, I was interrupted, I was about to sort of say what I was thinking and it was kind of, kind of cut short. So you listen to your people, because remember they're, they're kind of expert in what they feel and what they're experiencing. So I'd, I'd like to listen more to that. And then we could have got a bit more client centered towards what the pupil was actually thinking and feeling and, and getting getting that done. Um, I like the way that Alex talked about, um, you know, there was good knowledge about how to judge after an overtake, how it's safe to move back using the center mirror. Good, good stuff there like that. Um, just after the half time point, we moved out into a roundabout. I put an asterisk by this because I felt this was quite a serious issue. Coming into a roundabout, and we had a very hard stop um, because the level of instruction was incorrect. Because I was being talked through about like start braking now, brake, put your clutch down, take second gear, clutch up. Now, so I did that, clutch up. Now that would imply to me, we're going, but there wasn't a gap. So my clutch is up, I'm thinking I'm going, and then Alex has had to intervene to stop me going into that roundabout. So incorrect level of instruction. Think about the words that you're using. So what should have been said there is, okay, Howard, onto your brakes now, just keep your foot on the brakes, keep braking, keep braking, keep braking. That's it, pop your clutch down, look into the roundabout. Is it clear? My decision, I could have made that decision. Uh, no, so leave your clutch down and come to a stop. Or 
Yes, it is clear. Select second gear. If it's clear, take a gear. That's a nice little one you can use. So you brake, clutch down. Is it clear, Howard? Yes, so take second gear. Off your brake, clutch up. In we go. Would have been more accurate instruction. So it was, it was, it was bad instruction because it was clutch up, there's no gap, whoa, we're on the brakes and we stop hard. That, see, you know, it's bringing this score down. Do you know what? I'm not an examiner. If an examiner watched this, he might think, no, no, I wouldn't have that. That would be a fail for that because that, that was, was bad. So it's my opinion this is, and I just think, no, I think he did enough there. There was a, a lot of good points to outweigh the bad points. I believe Alex has got it. I think with more practice and experience that would just get better. And I feel he's at that point where he's ready. That's just, that is my opinion. Um, another little note here, nearly at the end now. Just make sure we're still recording. There was some incorrect information given me, given to me, about the uh, the countdown marker. So three hundred yard marker, not five hundred yard. So that would affect the um, the technical information section. So originally I marked it as a three, then I remembered he said that, and so I, I downgraded that to a two. Um, I would have liked to hear throughout the drive reinforcing the key message of to stop look to go so if your if your pupils got the mindset that their option a is to stop at that roundabout so then their braking will be smooth progressive up to the lines so if they have to stop it will stop low risk of rear end shunt when you do it like that get the people thinking like that there but then looking to go so prepare to stop look to go gear let's get on with it I would have liked that reinforced more earlier. The people was kind of giving him a bit of a nudge to sort of say, what was that thing again you said? Because I really liked that. That was really helping me. So um, I swear by that. So I would use that. And from my experience, the examiner that we've got locally is a fan. He, you know, this I think it really is effective and it, and it works. Okay, so need to talk about signaling. So there was an issue with signaling. People was constantly being reminded to use a signal for the exit at roundabouts and after overtakes. Um, yeah, I thought that could have got dealt with a little bit earlier, but it did get dealt with. Was that maybe because I hinted at it that I sort of said, well, you know, if I don't think it was helping, I think I'd forget that. So that was a little bit of a clue just to sort of get onto that. So again, you know, I've helped, I've intervened. Um, would a people do that? If that fault was missed again, this score would come down. But I gave Alex the opportunity just to sort of run with it. He took it and he, and he, he, he delivered. Um, yeah, so I'd like to see the people taking responsibility for those signals earlier. And just finally at the end, um, my the position fault that I mentioned earlier where, the, where I did my U-turn on the roundabout and exit in the right-hand lane and it wasn't really mentioned then. Well, then I gave Alex a second bite of the cherry and did it again. I exited wide off a roundabout um, and Alex spotted it and then he took me around the block, got that sorted in the time that he had left to get that fixed along with my signal. So I like that. Brought it to a nice end, used the time well so lots of positive, positive things. There are lots of things to think about that could be better. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Again, if you disagree, it's good to disagree because we're not all right. So yeah, we can't be right all the time. All I use is my experience um, from sitting on, on tests, um, obviously pre-COVID when we could do that, um, listening to debriefs, and, and talking to the examiners and just sort of getting a feel for what it is. So this is based on my opinion. If you disagree, please leave comments because it's good to disagree, it's good to share and sort of think what you're thinking. You might have had a di different experience where you are and think, well, that wasn't the way it was, that was a different outcome. So yeah, please leave comments and of course like, subscribe for future content and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.